Released 20 years ago today, on the 11th of October 1999, Time of the Titans is the second episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. It takes place in Colorado during the late Jurassic period 152 million years ago. The first scene shows us some beautiful scenery of a Jurassic forest as well as introducing us to the main star of this episode, the Diplodocus laying her eggs with a speculative egg tube which is probably erroneous but still inventive and kickstarts the episode regardless. The following shot and narration perfectly sums up the episode as the title appears. The establishing shot of the vast conifer forest are beautiful to look at and the narration explains how vastly different the Jurassic is to the earlier Triassic. We then see the Mother Diplodocus's eggs hatch as we are introduced to Ornitholestes. While the design shows the now outdated reconstruction with the nose horn, it still looks awesome with the grey and blue colours and it makes really distinct sinister chirping sounds. The tiny animatronic sauropodlets have a very cool design and camouflaged look and the brief scene where one rests for an instant is really appreciated by me as it shows extinct animals partaking in more mundane tasks and adds to the realism. The baby sauropodlets are so cute with their wiggly tails and the music is very playful to reflect this. Here it is also established that the babies have to stay in the cover of the forest until they are adults. We are then introduced to the vast open fern prairies where the real titans live in the Jurassic. The panoramic shot is amazing as it gradually sweeps from smaller to larger dinosaurs, from Dryosaurus to Stegosaurus to the enormous adult Diplodocus herd. The next scene showcases speculative symbiotic relationships between small animals such as the pterosaur Anurignathus and the giant Diplodocus. While it may not be accurate, the very brief scene where it defecates on the side of the Diplodocus not only adds to the sheer size difference between the two animals, but also adds to the realism as well. This is also made apparent by how the dung beetles utilise dinosaur dung. One year and another gorgeous forest establishment shot later and we get to the awesome canyon scene. Here we see the baby Diplodocus are now much larger and we are introduced to the male Stegosaurus and it looks so cool. Furthermore, we are also introduced to Allosaurus, which also has an awesome design and a really distinct roar. The Stegosaurus then unintentionally kills a baby Diplodocus, showing how unintentionally brutal nature can be sometimes. The Stegosaurus flushing blood into its place is amazing, despite its likelihood being doubted nowadays. Regardless, I still love it. The next scene shows the animatronic sauropodlet eating ferns by stripping leaves. This was apparently discovered on set when trying to figure out how the animals would feed. So it's very cool to see how we can learn about an extinct animal's biomechanics in such a way. Seeing the giant adult Diplodocus skeleton is great foreshadowing for how the crash we are following will appear later on in the episode. The adult Diplodocus toppling trees is an awesome way to show how they change the habitat around them into what is ideal for them. We also get an insight into their internal anatomy via gastroliths, i.e. stones they've swallowed to grind up vegetation, and farting. Four years later, and we see an Anurognathus finding a host in the form of a baby Diplodocus we have been following that is now considerably larger. The Ornitholestes is also shown to no longer be a threat to these animals. Following this, we are introduced to an oncoming forest fire, Showing natural disasters is a great way for the audience to believe this world is real, as it is an event that occurs in our modern world as well. After only three members of the crash survived the forest fire, they are forced onto the open plains where we are introduced to the immense Brachiosaurus and showcases niche partitioning as they can harvest the highest trees no other animals can reach. The following scene we see only two crash members are left as they join an adult group at last. We then get an insight into speculative Diplodocus mating behaviour and it's very cool to watch as we see the incredible size and power of these animals. The Allosaurus return in the next scene and we see them launch an attack on our female and I can't help but laugh every time the dramatic music plays as it starts running. There's just something funny about that, is it just me? The fight itself is very cool and not overdone at all. I really like how simplistic it is in its approach. 
The final aerial shot truly shows off the incredible size of the sauropod herd, as does the narration. And oh my goodness, Ben Bartlett's incredible score is unbelievable. The best way to describe Time of the Titans is majestic. This episode just has such grace and majesty in how it handles the enormous dinosaurs of the late Jurassic. It's truly a spectacle to behold. My one criticism of this episode, however, is that I think there is a bit too much focus on the Diplodocus. I would have liked some more time on the other animals of the Morrison formation, but at the same time, we kind of got that with the Ballad of Big Al, or just Allosaurus, depending on where you're from. Overall though, Time of the Titans is an incredible watch. To continue celebrating Walking With Dinosaurs' 20 year anniversary, join me next Friday when we look at episode three, Cruel Sea. I also reviewed a figure based on an animal that appeared in this episode, so if you'd like to check that out, please do wait for the end card that will be on in just a moment for a link to that video. Thank you so much for watching, bye bye now.